Today, we will be able to partition a number line into unit fractions. So far, we have been covering fractions with models and pictures. Today, we are going to use a number line to help us visualize fractions. If I were to share a piece of licorice between three people, both pieces are cut in three pieces. You will notice that this piece of licorice is partitioned into three equal parts. When we partition a number line, we do so in a similar fashion. We want all partitions to be equal. If I had a number line like this, it would be incorrect because we need all parts to be equal. Look at this ruler. One side uses inch measurements, while the other side uses centimeter measurements. The spacing between the numbers is consistent on both sides, but is different from the other side because a different hole is being used. Here is a number line with part of it labeled. We need to look at what the whole is. I can add the numbers 3, 4, 5, as well as 0. Each length between the numbers is a unit segment or whole. The 2 would indicate a length of 2 units long. Each whole is partitioned into thirds. Each of the lines before 1 represents lengths less than one. The tick marks between one and two represent lengths greater than one, but less than two units long. We are going to use Cuisinaire rods to help us create number lines with equal partitions. The orange rod will represent one hole. I will use this to segment one hole on my number line. Next, I will look at the rods to find what represents one half. The yellow can be used to help me label one half on my number line. Now, each of my partitions are the same length. For our next number line, I want to use the same orange rod combining it with a red rod to make my hole. I now will look through my rods to find what represents one-fourth of my hole. The green rod shows one-fourth of the hole. I can either line up my green rods to mark my tick marks of my segments of one-fourth, or I could use the same green rod over and over as well. This is one-fourth, this is one-fourth, this is one-fourth, and this is one-fourth. One-fourth referred to isn't a point on the number line. Rather, the length of the segment between the two tick marks. If I wanted to go beyond one hole, I could do so with the same rods and method. I first would need to label my hole on the number line. And using the same green rods, I can label my one-fourth segments, using it over and over, making each section the same length. I have now created two holes. I don't always have Cuisinaire rods to help me partition my number lines. Paper folding can also be used when partitioning number lines. For instance, if I wanted to cut a strip of paper equal to my hole, I could fold it in half, representing one half of my hole and giving me a visual of where I can partition my number line. If I fold the same piece of paper in half again, I have now created force and can mark force on my number line. If I even wanted to go a step farther, I can fold my paper in half one more time to create eight. 
By folding paper, I was able to partition my number line into equal pieces. I can use the same technique for thirds and six. For thirds, I do a burrito fold, where I pretend that I am folding a tortilla into a burrito. This isn't always perfect, but it is usually close enough. I have now partitioned my number line into thirds. If I wanted to label six, I could take my thirds and fold it in half to partition my number line into six. I have now partitioned my number line into equal segments. Today, we were able to create number lines to represent fractions. We used previous number line knowledge and extended it to partition holes into fractional pieces. Today's objective was to be able to partition a number line into unit fractions. We are able to create several number lines in this lesson using Cuisinaire rods as well as paper folding technique, both of which were used to help us create number lines with equal partitions.